If you live in Tucson, you've seen and heard them cruising overhead. They are United States Air Force A-10 fighter jets. The close air support warplane is highly valued by troops on the ground and the pilots who fly them. It's affectionately referred to as a lot of things. Uh, my favorite is the Warthog, but a, a tank buster or a tank killer, those are all names that have been associated with the Warthog. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Smiley, call sign Butters, is commander of the 355th Training Squadron at Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson. The mission of Smiley and the 355th is to train new and requalifying A-10 pilots how to fly the plane and master its weapons. That GAU-8 30 millimeter gun, 1,200 rounds of ammunition, able to shoot 60 of those per second, and just one of those rounds is enough to kill any kind of armored vehicle. So the primary design of the A-10 was around that gun, and it still is one of the most versatile weapons on the battlefield today. Hey, we got to show a force inbound. The battlefield of today is a lot different than the designers of the A-10 anticipated when it first went into production. The A-10 was uh, created back in the 70s to counter the Soviet armor threat in Europe and designed around a really big gun. The bones remain the same, but since then the plane has been modernized. To include an almost full glass cockpit with very sophisticated avionics and integrated targeting capabilities that allow us to really integrate into the modern fight and affect the uh, battlefield in all kinds of different environments from the fight against ISIS to a major theater conflict that we could experience in Korea. Lieutenant Colonel Smiley says it's not enough to fly the A-10 and deploy its weapons. These fighter pilots must prepare to be combat ready wingmen and flight leads throughout the world. We want them to be confident but humble at the same time. But the uh, number one thing that the guys get out of this course is the attack mentality. Never giving up. Get in the aircraft, know what the right thing to do is, and then have the confidence to do that under stress and pressure that is sometimes unimaginable. Knowing that a wrong move or a, a misstep or miscommunication could result in friendly troops dying or the enemy surviving when he shouldn't. Our nation's wars have recently included places like Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria, where the A-10 and her pilots bring lethal force to bear on the enemy and protect friendly ground forces through close air support, a mission it is uniquely qualified to do. A-10 pilots sometimes have to get what they call danger close when flying in to protect friendly forces and attack the enemy. North and south, west of the smoke, west of the Southern Afghanistan, 2006. I'm looking at danger close now. This warthog strike on Taliban forces was called in by a ground controller. Many times, friendly troops and the enemy are too close for comfort. It can be done as close as that shed. You know, those guys, they've, they've done that. It requires certain permissions from the ground commander. He has to... He gives his initials to say, you guys can strafe that close. So we call that danger close. That's Major Kyle Lanta, call sign SWAT a pilot with the 47th Fighter Squadron based at davis Monthan. The closest I've ever strafed was inside of 50 meters. So, you know, it's a half a football field away. Um, and you're putting down 100 rounds uh, to 200 rounds a pass. But those guys, they love it and they know how good we are at it, so they're comfortable with it. He's here at the Barry Goldwater Range, west of Tucson, near Yuma. Attack pilots from nearly every A-10 squadron, including those based in South Korea, have gathered to compete in hawk smoke. Hog smoke, the biennial competition for the hogs. You know, it's a gathering of hogs, if you will. Uh, started back in 2000, and it's continued to today. We're here to discuss tactics, techniques, and procedures, and put them on display for everybody to see. There is no hiding in this competition, but also what it does is, is it gets everybody on the same page and lets you know what guys are doing downrange. When the A-10s dive in on those scored strafing runs, they're just 75 feet or so off the ground. They're shooting at targets hung from poles less than a mile away. And their sound is unique. <laughs> Yeah. 
just heard is about a 50 round burst. You hear the impacts, plus the bullets breaking the mock, and then you actually heard the sound of the gun. So it goes in that order, you know, depending on where, where you are in space. For us today, that's what we're hearing. <laughs> that was about 70. Can you tell us a little bit longer? That gun is part of what makes the A-10 so lethal. Cherished by ground troops and feared by the enemy. It's a flying tank, you know. It, no kidding, was designed around the gun. It's an amazing machine, you know, designed to be low and slow if it needed to, loiter for a long time, and bring a lot to the fight. And so that's, that's the A-10 in a nutshell. The hog drivers at Davis Monthan have proven to be an exceptional bunch and currently have bragging rights. It's fun to remind people that you've won it and that the trophy has actually stayed at Davis Month for the past four years. So, yeah, they, I think everybody's out for us this year, but I, I have a feeling it's going to stay at Davis Month for another two years. SWAT wasn't flying for the defending champ 47th this year. That job was left to four captains, including David Knighton, call sign Gnome. It's awesome. It's pretty much like strapping on a 40,000 pound gun. Uh, my two biggest passions in life are airplanes and guns, and this is the intersection of the two. So it's a really effective, maneuverable, uh, deadly aircraft, and it's the mission that it does is, is a very important one, I think. That passion for the Warthog and her capabilities translated to the range. My team, we won three individual awards. We won top 45 degree high altitude dive bomb. We won top 30 dB HARS, which is a particular type of bombing delivery. And we won the top 10 degree low angle high drag, which is also another type of bombing delivery. So those three things helped us win the top conventional team overall. And then that combined with our placement in the tactical portion helped us win the top overall team. And then I took top overall pilot as well. Pilots from the 47th at DM retain their bragging rights and remain king of the hill. I think it's an honor just to represent your squadron because you know, every squadron's probably going to have their top four or five, the guys that they want to choose to represent them. And then it's very public, you know. Uh, so try not to mess it up in front of all your peers. But when you get up there and you're flying, you're really just concentrating on what's the next thing I have to do and, and how do I do it well. While there is a spirit of competition and rivalry, A-10 attack pilots know that all this training and experience is intended to sharpen their swords for battle. And when called, that they respond with precision and lethality. In combat, the stakes are a lot higher and the, the margin for error is a lot lower. And what you've got riding on the mission is super important. In Afghanistan, when you would leave the squadron to step out to your jet on a combat mission, the last thing you would see on the door before you walked out of the squadron was a sign that said, the mission is the 18 year old on the ground. Everything else is just support. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? It's a great source of uh, team pride and accomplishment to get out there and be part of a uh, successful mission. Even if you're not the pilot who was flying in the aircraft at that time, everybody has a role from maintenance generating the aircraft to the mission planners putting together the mission materials to the uh, pilots flying to everybody supervising and supporting on the airfield and uh, on the ground. So everybody has a role in that and everybody takes a lot of pride in that shared success. Even in our formal training unit here at Davis Monthan, there are a lot of teammates that we have that help us produce those 80 combat mission ready A-10 pilots a year. One of the ways Commander Smiley and his team train new A-10 pilots is in the flight simulator, where airmen can practice and hone their attack skills on a virtual battlefield. This is where we spent the first month or so of our training was working on all of our stuff in here before we ever really set foot to the aircraft. Captain Brendan Lanfear has only 20 rides in the Hog. Right now, he's executing 30-degree dive bombs on a target at the Goldwater Range. So this is where we pretty much develop all of our sight pictures, uh, all of our rolling techniques. We see all of the different maneuvers that we're going to do for the first time, and then we'll take them to the tactical ranges. It's, it's awesome. It's an amazing machine. It's so redundant in all of the features that it has to get you back home in one piece. And then the first time you fire the gun is just, uh, I mean, it's an experience I really can't, I can't describe. As Captain Lampier and his colleagues continue training and preparation for assignment to combat units, the A-10 remains a busy platform. Right here at Davis Monthan, we're executing a training mission, getting ready for guys to go into the combat units and fight our nation's wars. Uh, we've got a deterrence mission in South Korea where we're flying A-10s every single day in partnership with the South Koreans 
And then we're also involved in uh, continuing operations in OIR in the Middle East, Operation Inherent Resolve in Syria against ISIS and in Iraq. It will also continue flying in the skies over Tucson, training the next generation of United States Air Force A-10 pilots. For Captain David Noam Knighton, it all comes back to the troops on the ground. As an A-10 pilot flying in combat, guys will come up on the radio because they're in a situation where they badly and direly need you. So to be able to fly over in this thing and protect those 18-year-old guys on the ground and girls on the ground, um, it's a feeling like no other.